Hey guys, it is Shannon, and um, today's video is not a fun one. This is definitely going to be a serious video that I think I've needed to talk about for a really long time. Um, and in fact, I did several times try to talk about this in the past, and I was shut down repeatedly. However, I think now with today's climate and everything currently going on in this scene, um, it's a very appropriate and much needed thing I need to post. Um, it's recently come to my attention on Twitter that a lot of people- I'm sorry, like, I- this is- I've recorded this so many times and I'm gonna be incredibly uncomfortable through this whole video. It's just how it's gonna be. No matter how many times I record this, I'm gonna be uncomfortable. Um, it's an uncomfortable topic. Just ignore that. Um, I'm gonna try to keep myself as professional and composed as possible throughout this, just to relay the facts. Um, I also want to- say that I'm not accusing anyone of anything illegal. Immoral is a different story. Um, and anything, actually any crimes that I'm going to be talking about in this video have already been proven in a court of law. Um, so any evidence that I'm showing has already been taken to court in a case that was ruled in my favor, so I am free to talk about it. However, I will be keeping certain names out of this story for my own safety. You've already seen the title, so you kind of know what this is about. Um, anyways, going back to what I was saying, recently on Twitter, um, the concept of Brian Stars, my former manager and coworker in my digital escape, um, was protecting some very bad people. We all know this. Um, Austin Jones, who is now a convicted for um, producing and consuming child. I'm also going to be censoring these words probably because I do want this story to get out there and I don't want YouTube to suppress it because we're talking about real life subjects that happen. Um, but yes, so we know Austin Jones. There's many other stories coming out that um, I'm not really a part of or aware of or privy to the details, so I'm not going to be talking about those people, however, there is one case that directly affects me more than anybody that, like I said, I've tried to talk about on YouTube a few times but have been shut down throughout the years and I think it just needs to be said, it needs to be heard and I think people need to be aware that this kind of behavior is occurring and probably will continue to occur with certain people in this scene and this industry, so I guess let's begin with who I am talking about. Um, I'm going to be talking about my ex Diego Soares, or Diego Navarrete. Um, most people know him as Diego Soares. For a long time he was really just known as my ex-boyfriend, but recently he has been promoted in the gaming scene by the likes of big names like Ninja. Um, I really don't know anything about gaming, so he's the only streamer I know. Um, but he has been promoting him, they have been, as far as I can tell, doing competitions or something together. I don't know, whatever. He is coming back into the spotlight and that's why I think this needs to be talked about. I dated Diego Soares about five years ago now, when I was 18, I'm about to be 23. Um, he is about to be 24 in August, so just keep that in mind as we talk about this story. Um, he is not the person who assaulted me. I'd like to get that right off the bat. I'd like to get that clear. Um, he did a lot of shitty stuff to me, but that he is not the person that assaulted me. Um, all right, let's just begin. He sought me out on you now. Many of you guys know I used to broadcast on you now, and that was really where he had most of his fan base. And our relationship began when he would send his fans over in droves to spam my chat with Diego thinks you're cute, Diego wants your number, Diego's gonna hit you up after this, respond to Diego, Diego wants your number, Diego wants your number, send Diego your number. It, it was like just very overwhelming and at first I relented and I didn't give it to him. I didn't even DM him but eventually I did DM him, I did give him my number, yada yada yada. I wasn't interested at first but eventually he was very manipulative and charming in my opinion and got me, um, he, he won me over essentially. 
Now, upon winning me over, we were not dating. I had never met him. We only talked um, via FaceTime, Skype, online. We had a pretty public, like, flirtatious relationship, but we were not together at this point. Um, however, I did want to see if this is something I wanted to pursue, so we started talking about me possibly coming to visit him where he lives in Colorado Springs. Um, all right, so that's where everything starts to go really fucking wrong. After I had... Minor semantics of this may be incorrect, but I think it was after I, I had already booked my plane ticket or we were in the process of booking the plane ticket. He told me there was just one minor little problem about me coming, and obviously I said, you know, what? what is the problem? <laughs> Tell me, I'm curious. You know, you should have probably told me this a while ago, but let's let's hear it. And he tells me that he has a fan who, and he does describe her as a fan to me, um, who is ravenously obsessed with him and is under the impression that they were together. That's how it was initially brought to my attention. I was told, that's pretty much it. You're not going to hear about this. You might see this person who, this is the person I'm not going to name because this person is the person who ended up stalking and assaulting me, um, stalking over a various period of months and eventually tracking me down and assaulting me in person. This is the person. Um, I reread this person I'm sure is watching this. Um, I, I would like, if you know who this is, please do not contact this person. Now I'm talking to my audience. Do not contact this person to this person. Do not contact me. Do not contact my audience. I reread the restraining order I have, which we'll get into in a minute, and I do have the right to follow up with another court case if you break this restraining order. I will sue you. That's not a threat. That's a promise. Um, so stay away from me. But I, I, it's finally time that I get to tell this story because I've lived with this for years and I have, this is really what ultimately led me to distance myself from YouTube. I'm under the impression that this person maybe met him once or something, that this girl met him once and like maybe had a, I, I really don't know. I don't know. She was under the, I was told she was under the impression that they had a thing and he was not under that impression. So I booked a flight, either I already had or I do right after this conversation, and yada yada yada, things go on, and I make the trip to Colorado to visit him for the first time to see if this is a relationship I want to pursue. Little known, unbeknownst to me, this girl, this unnamed girl, had been watching my social media presence for weeks if not months and analyzing everything I was doing everywhere I was going and she had an inkling I guess that I was going to meet up with Diego and sure enough she she found where I was um I would like at this point to show you this is my uh <laughs> this is my court documents it's a little raggedy these are my court documents, which I have talked about on live streams before. Um, can't really show you because it has a lot of personal information. However, I will be reading through the evidence that I took to court because it tells my stalker's story in her own words, which I think is more disturbing than anything I can put into words for you. So at this point, I'd like to delve into my stalking and my assault. All right, so like I said, we're gonna go through this evidence here. I'm not gonna show you, but this literally, like I'm almost positive, I didn't buy the court records, but they exist. Um, there are public domain court records that you can get. All of this, like I said, has already been proven in a court of law um, in a civil case that I won and now have a restraining order against this person. They are not allowed to contact me, be near me, or even talk about me on social media. That is a specific part of my documents. It's a specific clause in my order and um, yeah, so like I said, if you know who this person is, don't contact them about me. And if you are this person, don't contact me. But we're going to be going through, in her own words, 
my attack. Um, that was revolved around Diego, and I'd like to keep you to keep that in mind as we proceed. So the first page of evidence, she sends a picture that I'm sure a lot of you guys will recognize if you were around in this drama. It is literally a picture of, I'm going to blur everything else out on the screen, but this is a picture that she sent in her Twitter DMs, a picture that I took of a street sign that shows an airplane and in fact it's completely blurred out I blurred it on purpose because I was kind of hinting at a surprise collaboration between me and Diego um, so that's literally the only information that was put out into the public about where I was going a blurred street sign with a vaguely visible picture of an airplane on it um, and she says knew it this is talking to another honestly it would be <laughs> It would be too much of a compliment to call this person an influencer or YouTuber or whatever. Just a random person um, who helped her plan this assault. This is not Diego responding. I'm going to call this guy, Guy. Let's just call him Guy. Her. Knew it. Guy. Five hours from now. You have a little less than five hours to get ready. Her. I've been ready since I woke up. I'm waiting for a friend to pick me up. Guy. This shit is exciting. I cannot wait to see this go down. Her. I can't believe I figured it out. Guy. That arrogant little wart will get what she deserves. Her. I am so ready, I'm long overdue for an ape shit rampage. Fuck yeah, she will, and if it goes down, she's getting her hair ripped out first. Guy. Too bad she doesn't have much left to rip out. Her. True, I'll shove whatever I can rip out into her shit mouth. Her. Er, guy, I'm sorry. Guy. This bitch doesn't even know the storm she's about to walk into. Make sure to leave a black eye so bad she can't see any of the dicks in her face. Her. Oh yeah, hopefully she'll swing when I make a comment about her bald head. Also, I fucking will. I'll make her mouth and every other fuckhole unable to use. All right, and this is kind of skipping to a different part of the conversation. A couple hours later, um, she says, I've been having butterflies in my stomach since last night, and when I woke up with sweaty palms and shaky hands, my adrenaline has been slowly increasing since last night. And the reason this was important to me because was because, and to, you know, the court, clearly premeditated. She had been thinking about this for days at least since the night before and honestly there's much evidence to prove longer than that and then we're going back to a part sorry this conversation does skip because i was instructed to only you know use parts that like really uh depicted her um threatening physical harm anything else i kind of just cut out because it, it wasn't important and there was so much of her threatening physical harm in these messages that um I didn't really need any more. Um, anyways, so back to the conversation. She says, God, I can't believe I fucking called this. If I was right about everything so far, I'm definitely right about my ability to destroy her with my bare hands. Guy, I refuse to believe she'll even stand a chance. She may get a few nice hits, but you'll fucking obliterate her. Her. Oh yeah, I've been strategizing my technique. Gonna grab her hair while I bust her fucking face and slam her head into my knee. Guy. Careful, yo. Don't want to get whore on your knees. Her. That's why I'm wearing pants and I'm gonna be soaking my hands in bleach afterwards anyway. Which I figured was important because if that was actually serious, that's covering up a crime scene, so congrats. Alright, and then at this point in the conversation, she is actually on her way to the airport where I am landing. And she says, I'm gonna head out. I'll message you when I get there or something. Good luck to me. Guy says, hella making popcorn. At this point, she has gotten to the airport and she says, and now I wait. Guy says, this is gonna be fun. Her. Now I gotta figure out the terminal she's coming out of. Meh. Guy says, this is super nice, just look for a bunch of hair falling out. No, but for real, just check the terminal for incoming flights. She says, ha ha ha, good idea, thanks. She says, there's several different terminals coming in from Florida. Just gonna wait in the garage near passenger pickup. I need all the luck I can get to spot her. 
like like at this point who does this the, genuinely crazy sorry that's my opinion now we're skipping to the point of the conversation she is having with this guy in t- twitter dms um where she has already assaulted me um and i'm gonna read the assault in her words first um and then i'll tell you my perspective of it because honestly like i said i think her words are more disturbing than anything that i can come up with so this is her accounting of the event immediately after it happened in twitter dms to a friend of hers she says i walked up to her her being me and was like oh what a surprise it's the home wrecking skank of the internet how does it feel to be a fucking liar to thousands of people and all she kept saying she being me i'm sorry i'm sorry you feel that way i didn't even know of your existence and i was like i being my stalker No, you're still lying through your fucking teeth. You can't even look at me in the eyes, you dumb cunt. Are you that fucking dumb that you don't realize what you did was fucked up? Are you aware of it and don't care? And she kept saying, I didn't know of your existence. Which is true. I didn't know... I didn't until I had already booked this flight and it was... The impression Diego gave me was that this girl was a fan. And I was like, back to reading this, so being my stalker again, and I was like, bullshit, Diego said he told you everything, because clearly he's an honest guy. And she was like, well, maybe he was lying. (laughs) And I was like, you both fucking lied, meaning both me and Diego. And then I mentioned the whole twisting, putting words in my mouth and playing it off as harassment and using her illness as an accessory, meaning my alopecia, which I don't think I've ever done and how I'd never want to see her die. I'd rather see her live to suffer because she made me suffer. And she said, I can call security. And I was like, fucking go ahead. All I'm doing is bitching you out. And then it fell silent. And I was like, I hope you like toilet water and piss because you're a piece of shit. And um, at that point, she literally pulled out a bottle of her own urine and poured it on my head in the airport. The original goal was to get me to swing first and fight her um, with the things she was saying to me, which were incredibly vulgar, incredibly horrible. Lots of comments about my alopecia, lots of comments about me being a whore and a cunt and etc. cetera, et cetera. Um, But I'm not an asshole, so I just apologized and tried to de-escalate because I am an eerily calm person um, when confronted. And essentially all she could get out of me was nothing. So she poured a bottle of her own urine on my head, which she brought as a backup plan. Um, So that is the assault. Yes, in the United States, pouring bodily fluids or throwing urine or feces at someone is classified as an assault. You cannot throw your bodily fluids at other people. I'm sorry. We live in a society. You can't do that. So, um, I was, I was assaulted. Uh, it wasn't a full fist fight like she had hoped, but I was assaulted with this crazy person's urine. Um, this is all happening before I ever met Diego. I had literally stepped off a plane, had not even gotten my bags yet, and I was soaked in this person's urine. Um, so that's great. There is several more accountings, um, through these Twitter DMs with her and other YouTubers, um, about what happened. However, I think you get the gist. Let me just double check. After the assault, um, I did meet Diego, I did file a police report, and I did continue to press um, a civil matter. However, this person, my stalker, continued to stalk and harass me. She kept tabs on my location while I was in Colorado, and at this point I was no longer able to leave Colorado because I had a pending court case for a restraining order against this person. Um, There's incidences of her renting a gun and posting threats um, about coming for me with said gun. I'll blur all of that out. Um, Let's see. About 
several more just to prove a point. This was over a matter of months. She said she'd slit my throat with the knife you left in my back. I wish I could spit acid on you. Too bad I don't have acid spit. And one of the friends that she was communicating, planning this attack with said, or you could just pour the acid over them. Um, anyways, I think that's, honestly, that proves my point. However, this is dealt with. This, this assault, this stalker, as of now, is dealt with. And like I said, if this person, if this girl ever tries to come for me again, I will press not only civil charges, but criminal charges as well for the assault that I dropped, um, just because I didn't want to stay in Colorado anymore. However, you might be wondering, how do I have my stalker's Twitter DMs? And that's a really, really poignant um, part of this case and this video. Why do I have private messages from my stalker and attacker? And the answer is because Diego Soares, my love interest at the time, had access to all of these DMs and were reading them in real time as this was happening. He knew she was planning this assault. He knew she actually came to the airport. He knew she was there and he never said anything to me. And we are fucking lucky that all she did was pour a bottle of piss on me because I know she wanted it to be much worse and it could have been much worse. He knew the entire time all he had to do was say stay at your gate. There's someone there to hurt you and he never said anything. And the craziest thing is I never put this together until much after the fact when I was actually in court. Diego did testify on my behalf in this civil case. Um, about this assault and me getting this protection order, which again, I will reiterate that I did win with flying colors. Not only did the judge say that she had never seen so much incriminating evidence, this isn't even all of it. I also had video evidence, flash drives full of it that I played on a TV for the court. Um, so much evidence. Not only did she say that, but she looked at me and said, you need to stay away from this young man because when he testified, albeit on your behalf, he was smiling the entire time. He loves this, is what the judge said to me. He loves that he got to pit two young women against each other and manipulate them both from completely different standpoints and it ended up in this perfect storm of you getting assaulted. The judge said this. I, I'm not saying this. The judge said this. She told me I needed to probably press criminal charges if that was something I could do. And I told her I was not going to because it meant staying with him, with Diego. Because I knew I couldn't afford a hotel for months. You know, my parents couldn't. This, um, this assault, and also I did, um, I did reference this case on... Twitter as a domestic violence assault case because in the state of Colorado attacking a former partner's new partner is legally domestic violence so I spent a lot of time um, during that trip that you guys saw the good parts of on you now spending time talking to attorneys to my parents to victims, advocacies, um, no, none of what you saw was actually what was real, and in my opinion, the entire time I was there, I think Diego was trying to sabotage my court case. He purposefully woke up late the day of my court case, told me he printed evidence when he didn't, I mean, it, it's just astounding. He, uh, above all else, he knew this was about to happen and did nothing. Did nothing. And then continued after the fact, after I got home and we broke up, to continue to harass me on social media. He even started a number one trending tag on social media. Um, Shannon is over party or something. Uh, about how I was the abuser. 
when in reality I had literally just spent a month sitting in my personal hell awaiting a court date so I could have paper protection from his, I guess, ex-girlfriend who he actually was dating and lied to me about, um, and lied to her about the situation as well. Like, none of this had to happen. So we know now why I personally think he is equally culpable in that attack. Not legally, but morally, he knew. He knew it was about to happen, and he- some part of him wanted to see it, I'm sure of it, because he let it happen. Um, yeah. So, we're gonna take this full circle a little bit now, just really quick, and um, we talked about Brian Stars in the beginning of this video, and him protecting people such as Austin Jones and um, other, other people in the industry that are slowly coming out of the woodworks. Alright, sorry guys, my camera overheated, and honestly, I did too a little bit, so I needed that for a second, but I'm now gonna talk about what I was about to talk about. Bringing everything full circle, we started this video with Brian protecting people, and I would like to share how I feel he is personally involved in this situation and protecting Diego. Um, like I said, the aftermath after this assault and our un inevitable breakup, he did everything, he being Diego, did everything he could to tarnish my reputation online and um, harass me, just make me feel small and terrible and shitty and it worked. It was maybe the most depressed I've ever been in my entire life to have so many people turn against me for something that I didn't do, um, in fact was done to me. The only thing I did in this relationship was essentially get assaulted and then end it um, uh, amongst being you know, the social media drama that culminated from this event and the massive backlash on everyone involved, um, rightfully so for some, and I would say unrightfully so for me, my manager at the time got involved, my manager being Brian Stars, and told me I had to absolutely knock it off and um, stop what I was doing online in terms of trying to talk about this situation and expose the people involved for who they were and what happened. He said, Brian said I absolutely had to stop and in fact he sat me down. I was in person with him at this point. Brian sat me down and wrote out a statement for me to post on my social media um, about ceasing this drama and everything. And um, this is when it occurred to me because after posting my my statement that Brian wrote out for me, Diego posted an almost identical statement on his social media that I knew Brian had helped him word. And this was when it occurred to me that not only was I Brian's client, Diego was also Brian's client. Amidst all of this drama, amidst my assaults that Brian knew about and everyone knew about, frankly, Brian signed him as a client on the same management label as me. Are you kidding me? Brian also knew about all of this and behind my back and everyone in MDE's back, he signed him and many other shitty people that we didn't know about. We didn't know for the longest time Austin Jones was still signed to the same management as us, even going through his trial. Allegedly, that's what I've heard. I, I Again, I'm not trying to get sued. Anything I'm saying is allegedly what I've heard besides the stuff that's already been proven in a court of law. Yeah, and it gets worse from there, honestly, because there's other things Brian knew about involving Diego, and this is really where I feel the story is ultimately important to share because this is now not just affecting me and my internal bubble, this is actually, or did in back in the day, affect a lot of young people for reasons I'm about to get into, um, and the title kind of hints at. Um, this is where things get really fucked up, and I have been trying to blow the whistle on this as well for years, but again, all I got in return was trending hashtags about how I'm over and just onslaught of abuse from social media. Um, 
there's a thing that Diego does, and again, I'm not arguing the legality of it. I'm not saying it's illegal in any capacity. I am saying it's creepy as fuck, and morally, this needs to be something people know about. Um, if you're considering ever meeting this person on a tour or anything, because that was where all of this went down, and due to recent exposure from the gaming community, such as people like Ninja, he's getting a platform again, and um, I know he's going to use his platform. I mean, I don't know, but I can assume he's going to use his platform for this again, because this is what it was used for for a very, very long time. Sorry guys, my stupid fucking camera keeps overheating, but I'm honestly kind of glad it just did again because it gave me a second to gather some evidence and information about what I'm gonna say and just like kind of put it together. Um, not only did Diego meet me via bombarding me with his fans on social media, he has also had a habit of in my opinion, crossing the line with young girls he meets on tour. Um, and Brian was well aware of this as well because this was a lot of where our descent, um, me and my descent with Diego personally began even before realizing he was as culpable as I currently feel he is for my attack by his other girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, I really don't know who the fuck she even to this day who she was to him. He lied about everything, so I don't know. Um, but he also, like I said, is using his influence to do this bullshit. There's this thing he did that uh, was kind of a running joke in MDE and like the scene kid community. Um, Diego would stage kiss fans without beating around the bush, um, and he may still do it. I really don't know. These pictures are all publicly on Instagram that I am about to show you. So nothing, I really didn't have to dig very hard. I just went through his tags to find these pictures, and just from memory, I know there are dozens more. These are just the ones I could find going through a very specific Instagram tag, which is really saying something about how many of these photos probably exist. Um, the stage kiss essentially was a real kiss. He would just put his thumb right here on his bottom lip, so somehow that was better, I guess. Um, and the running joke in MDE and everything was, you know, let come over here, let me give you a stage blowjob, I'll just put my thumb there and it doesn't count, it's not cheating, it's not, you know, it's not sexual assault, it's a, it's a stage blowjob. Which just goes, you know, that was our kind of euphemism for how just ridiculous that, um, reasoning was, especially given the ages of some of these girls, and at this point I'm going to start referencing actual photos, um, because this is obviously very important, this is the main part of the video I really wanted to get out there just on the off chance, honestly not so off chance anymore, he continues competing in these large scale competitions and touring again. Um, before I start showing these pictures, I just want to mention I did my best to blur out these girls as they are underage. I'm also going to be blurring out the majority of the username just so you cannot find these girls because they don't need to be put in the spotlight for this. This is not their fault. Um, everyone I'm about to show is well under the age of 18 in these photos. Um, and I would also like to say that Diego in um, 2016 on the Boys of Summer tour, which is where all of these photos are essentially from, um, was 20 years old. 19, at the end of being 19 or 20 years old. I honestly think he was 20 because he's about to be 24 in August. So 2016, I'm going to say he was 20. And it, actually, yes, he was 20 because these pictures are from September um, 2016. So he was already 20 if these um, timestamps are accurate. So I'm going to begin my first photo. There's a lot, so, like I said, I've been trying to blow the whistle on this for a while, and honestly, I don't know why, just no one ever gave a fuck, because I'm seeing a lot of guys 
torn apart for, you know, rightfully so, but for less obvious creepy things. So I guess maybe, I don't know. I really hope that um, this is taken seriously and other people start to look into this besides me. Again, we're going to start um, with some photos here. So this is the first photo from the Boys of Summer tour with Diego and a fan where I actually was kind of dumbfounded by this one because her caption, despite having it still up, which I, I'm not dumbfounded by her, I'm just dumbfounded by the fact that he continued doing this after him literally liking this photo with this caption. It says, Diego, in quotes, I regret doing this, slash, he liked. Now, if we go to the profile of this person, again, who I am trying to keep as anonymous as possible, she graduated high school in the class of 2018, which in 2016, when this kissing photo was taken, would have made her, assuming she graduated at age 18, like most people, about 16 years old. Again, like I said, illegality is another thing. Um, immorality is really what I'm discussing here, and you can make your own decisions. I'm just sharing the information that is already on the internet. Moving on to the next photo. This is also a photo from 2016 when Diego was 20 years old. And if I go to this profile, sorry, I was um, looking for the thing on this picture. Uh, this person states they are college bound in March of 2019, which would make this person in 2016, assuming again that they graduate at the age of 18, which is actually being generous because I graduated at the age of 17, that would make her approximately 15 years old in that kissing photo. Moving on to the next photo, and I mean these are just the ones where I could literally find the ages of these girls in question. Diego, again, in 2016, is 20 years old, and this girl, according to her profile in 2020, is 18, which would make her approximately 14 in that photo. Um, again, there's a thumb there, but I really don't personally think a thumb makes much of a difference when you're a 20-year-old man and you're stage-kissing a 14-year-old girl. Again, we're going to go on to another photo from 2016, in which he is stage kissing a fan. Stage kissing, I literally am using the word as a joke. He's kissing these girls with his thumb blocking the part of his lower lip. Some, he's blocking it more than others. I'll give him that, but what the fuck. This girl celebrated her sweet 16th according to her profile in October of 2017, making her approximately 15 in the age of the kissing photo. And finally, on the last one that I feel like showing you guys with, you know, verbalized proof, is this girl who stage kissed Diego in 2016, and I actually unfortunately found a picture of her holding her driver's permit, which I will not be showing you for fucking obvious reasons, um, that states she was born in 2003, which would make her approximately 13 and Diego 20 at the age of that photo. Again, there's a thumb there. I really don't think that makes a difference. And if you do, I think you really need to reevaluate your priorities and reevaluate who you support because it's unacceptable it's just blatantly unacceptable you know like i said in some of these pictures he's covering more with his thumb in others he's not um personally i think it doesn't matter it's it's fucked it's just fucked and honestly like again for the final time we're not talking about illegality here we're talking about immorality and this is the type of environment he creates and actually instigates this is his idea these stage kiss photos this has become an ingrained part of this entertainer's brand doing these staged kissing photos with girls who if these numbers are correct on their social media are as young as 13 years old and that's a problem 
there is no like we shouldn't be fostering this type of I don't even I don't even know what to call it and um to this day I, I couldn't tell you if Brian still has Diego signed but going back to that he knew about these photos I showed him these photos in fact I showed a lot of people these photos and I was told to keep quiet about them and um you know maybe I am personally a little biased because of my assault and my whole situation being stalked and the fact that Diego single-handedly could have stopped all of that and didn't sure maybe I have a bit of a biased opinion on these photos and the concept of stage kissing but honestly I don't really think I do I've shown these in recent weeks to several people who have been like how is this not you know trending I was like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know how no one ever was unbothered by this when I brought this up years ago. And I really fucking hope that people are bothered by this now. Um, because we need to stop making these types of people famous. I personally was victimized because of this person's fame. Um, in a roundabout way, albeit. But I, like I said, think he could have stopped me from literally being assaulted and stonked. And he didn't. Um... And also, like I said, goes on tour, and the number one thing he does is these stage kisses, so... I'm out of energy, if you can tell. You know, I want to say I'm sorry if this was not very concise. Um, it, it's a really, like, this story, this whole situation spanned probably, like, a good six-month period from start to finish, if not longer. It really, like... Genuinely, besides actually being raped by three guys when I was 15, this was probably one of the most traumatic events in my life. Um, knowing there was someone out there who had the intent to take my life and that there was absolutely no one, including my own boyfriend at the time, who gave a fuck enough to stop it and was actually there to stop it. Um, my manager, Brian Stars, did not have my back. In fact, he went so far as to sign my ex-boyfriend, um, Diego Soares, who, like I said, I feel could have stopped this entire situation. In the middle of the situation, he signed him because of all of the revenue it was generating him. And um, if this doesn't just go to show you how fucked up everything is on YouTube, in this scene, in general, I don't know what will. Things need to start changing, um, and it can start with you, and I'm not saying you're a bad person, but who you choose to consume is a really powerful thing, and he, as well as other people that do these creepy things, cannot have the power to do these creepy things if we stop consuming them, and that's what needs to be done. We need to stop getting, you know, maybe initially get them trending to tell the world what they fucking did and how disturbing it is, but after that, we need to stop consuming them, stop engaging, stop interacting. These people need to go, or this community is going to be forever tainted, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you for listening to this story. Um, my story. I hope that putting this out there will make me feel more comfortable in coming back to the internet. Um, you know, I'm never, I'm never gonna feel safe about sharing this story because, like I said, I think I got out lucky in my situation, um, and I just hope we can keep it that way and no one comes out any worse than I did. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for listening again. And I will see you in my next, hopefully, more uplifting video.